You can't force core values on someone. It doesn't work. It's the gray area when you're trying to sell around your core values or when you don't have core values that makes decisions hard. It makes it a quantitative and almost easy decision when we're bringing people on or when we have to let them go. Hi, my name is Scott Pieper. This is the Real MFR series. And today I have Matt Better with Schaefer Construction with me, and we are talking about culture. We talked a little bit about teamwork previously, but can you tell us the differences in your mind, what the difference between culture is and teamwork or team building? Culture is what's inside you, right? As, as a person, but, but also as, a, as an organization. You know, Schaefer Construction is much bigger than, you know, a logo, or, or, a, or just a namesake. So the, the culture we build, you don't necessarily have to have it when you, when you join our team. You have to have our core values. You have to match those. But the culture we build is, is something that you can generate, something that you can grow into. And you as a team member, frankly, help to, to build and to foster that culture. So I think you can't have a team without having a culture first. And that team helps to then grow that culture even more. And I know that's, that's a really roundabout way of answering it, but that's, yeah. that's truly how we kind of approach it. You talk a lot about one of your core values is having a hundred to nothing mindset. Tell me a little bit about what that means to you and how you've instilled that into your team and how your team takes that mindset and then uses it or brings it out to the field. So a hundred to zero is a concept that, that I heard first from Andy Frisella. And we took it as a core value to be, you know, when, when we approach anything, once we, at a, as a leadership level, decide to go after a project, let's say our mindset is that we are going to win. We're going to succeed. We're going to beat whoever we're proverbially playing against a hundred to nothing, hundred to zero, no questions asked. And that's, it's this, it's this attitude of aggressive impatience that I really push hard on our team. And it's not a, bad thing. A lot of people get kind of taken aback when they hear those two words used together. And it, it's not at all meant to be a, a negative. It's we, we have to have an impatience about everything we do. There has to be a pace that we keep and we have to aggressively pursue our goals because we're not the only guys on the block that can stick a building up in the air. There's a lot of competition, especially around Southeast Michigan here where we operate. So we have to be able to run full speed from the day we sign a contract, let's say, to the day we hand over the keys. And if we can't, we're doing something wrong. So that's, that's 100 to zero in, in a nutshell. It's, it's that aggressive impatience, burn the ships mentality. There, you know, there is no plan B. Okay, that's cool. I like that. How else or is there other ways that you've used those core values and really put them into your team in a systematic or, or – um process-driven way that maybe others that are watching this now could say, oh, it's a great idea. I have this great idea that I really believe we're all about, but I don't know how to put it into the team. We, I especially, I talk about them constantly with all of our team. Um, we meet, depending on different levels in, in, in our organization, we meet weekly um, and we always harp on our core values. We, we talk about them, we cast that vision, we, we throw it out in front of our our people constantly. It's on our marketing fodder that we put out. It's on our internal communications that we, we use amongst ourselves. We submit our core values in our proposals now. Uh, we, we also review our employees and ourselves on a, we're supposed to do it quarterly, but we slack and it usually happens only twice a year, but our, our employee reviews are focused largely around our core values. And so it, it really just helps to foster the magnitude of, of what they represent to us. It's good. I think I, I, one of the challenges I had and, I, and still struggle with sometimes is just bringing that culture into our everyday. Um, and we've made amazing strides at it. And actually, I don't think it's an issue anymore. I think it's very evident now. But as we, as I think back over a four or five year period, it took maybe three years, four years and different iterations and different things we try to do. And quite frankly, it took cycling our team twice, the whole, every position almost before we actually had the right team to have the right culture to then use it and be, be what we are. So it's not a quick, fast process. It's certainly not one meeting. And I think Matt, you hit the nail on the head. It's something you work on and you evolve to, and 
you you build it into everything you do, including your, um, especially your incentive plans and especially the way you evaluate and hire and of course fire too. It has to be. It has to be how you guide your company. And, and the tricky thing about it is you can't force core values on someone, right? You as a leader, you have to find values that are that you all mutually have and share. You can't bring in new people and say, hey, you're going to represent a hundred to zero mentality. It doesn't work. So it's a long process. And, and we went through the same thing. You know, like I mentioned, we, I've been here for four years. We're just now at a point where we are growing our team based only on those core values. We hire based on them, we fire based on them. And it makes it a quantitative and almost easy decision when we're bringing people on or when we have to let them go. It actually makes your job and decision-making really easy because you just look at those core values and the answer is black and white. It's the gray area when you're trying to sell around your core values or when you don't have core values that makes decisions hard, in my opinion. Absolutely. And once you learn that as a leader, especially that it's either yes or no, you can't, you can't force it. You can't mend it. If the person doesn't have, it, it doesn't make the person a, a bad person. They're not going to you know, wind up homeless with no friends because they don't represent your core values. They just don't fit on your team.